was to be the source of the first report. The first report saying it was because the uh, building had been weakened. Without any possible eyewitness testimony of people hearing demolition charges and seeing what looked like a controlled demolition, because the report went out before any eyewitness testimony to the collapse could possibly have been recorded. By breaking the scoop with the official explanation in hand, much was done to steer the audience away from wondering what really happened to World Trade Center 7. The building was probably meant to either have been hit by Flight 93 or to have come down with one of the towers. It appears then that the premature report of Building 7 collapse was damage control for the unexpectedly conspicuous demolition of the building. So, back to Silverstein. If he was involved in 9-11, which in all probability he was, he probably knew that the collapse of Building 7 was a fiasco. Smoking gun evidence was loose. Silverstein, as insurance profiteer, was an obvious suspect. If you were in Silverstein's situation, wouldn't you prepare yourself well for any questions about Building 7? Wouldn't you think ahead not to say anything that might be interpreted as a confession? Silverstein said, pull it. And note the ambiguity. He didn't say, I gave the demolition team the orders to detonate the explosives and pull the building down. Nor did he say, I gave the firefighters my permission to pull the team out. He said, I just want to see what was, was pull it. A very unusual and ambiguous choice of words. And thus Silverstein put the spotlight of the World Trade Center 7 investigation on himself. Here it is again. Bizarre, seemingly deliberate self-incrimination. Maybe you can dismiss the three issues above as examples of human error in a complex plot. But not this one. towers from my window and this is where I you know I'm looking and all of a sudden down there I see this van park and I see three guys on top of the van and I could see that they were like happy you know they 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 were they didn't look shocked to me you know they didn't look shocked I thought it was very strange amazingly enough we have found the moving company where the five Israelis worked we had received an all-points bulletin, and uh, I just happened to see the van and, you know, hollered over to my lieutenant. You know, I think that could be the van. We checked it out, and it was. You know, we were all on edge, obviously, so I really wasn't looking to make friends with these people, and neither were the officers that I were with. Once we started talking to them, you know, they were pretty much like, hey, you know, we're, you know, we're not against you, we're with you. One of the most explosive discoveries of 9-11 was that agents of the Israeli intelligence agency, the Mossad, were celebrating the demolitions of the towers. They made quite a spectacle of themselves. They set up video cameras to film the burning twin towers prior to the attack and were seen apparently congratulating themselves afterward with high fives. They were seen shouting and jumping for joy and witnesses said they went to extreme lengths to photograph themselves in front of the wreckage. They did this in at least three locations, Liberty State Park, a rooftop in Oaxacan, and in a parking lot. Police received several calls about them, ultimately leading to their arrest. Because they were dressed in traditional Arabic clothing, people assumed they were Arabic. But when they were arrested, it was revealed that they were Israeli and that they worked for the Mossad. They later claimed that what made them so happy was the fact that now America would feel closer to Israel in the war on terror. The fact of the matter is we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. Now there are several serious problems with this story. First of all, if the cover story was true, 
why would they have dressed up as Arabs for their celebration and make a spectacle of themselves supporting the carnage on 9-11? To defame Arabs? Considering how much defamation was done to the Arab world by the attacks themselves, how much more could they possibly have hoped to achieve? Did they disguise themselves as Arabs to protect their identities? If so, why not simply protect their identities by celebrating the attacks indoors, watching television? Why did they choose such public places where they would be seen and, of course, reported? That's quite a risk to take, don't you think? As it turned out, they were arrested and exposed. And this not only ruined whatever their mission had been, but it also implicated Israel in the attacks in a major way. So one important question is, were these celebrations part of these Mossad agents' mission, or was it something they did just for fun? It certainly doesn't look like it was just for fun. Who dresses up in traditional Arab clothing and goes out celebrating on 9-11? In three different locations. That's definitely not many people's idea of a good time. But if it was part of a mission, what could possibly have been the motive for it? Did the people who sent these agents on that mission really not compare the risk to the benefit? It makes no sense. And it gets more complicated. NBC News reported that at least one caller to the NYPD reported the five Israelis, identifying them first as Palestinian. When asked for clarification, the caller said they were wearing chic uniforms. Now who would describe anybody they didn't know as Palestinian? Palestinians look just like many other Arab ethnicities. And Palestinians living in New York and New Jersey do not typically dress in what could be described as chic uniforms. Most wear Western clothes. Was the caller trying to slander Palestinians? Now that's just ridiculous. We're talking about a call to 911. Why would the caller identify the people as Palestinian? Let's recap for a moment. Israeli intelligence agents on 9-11 first made a spectacle of themselves dressed as Arabs and made sure everyone saw them cheering the collapse of the towers. Someone identified them as Palestinian, leading to their arrest. A 2020 report covered the arrest of the Israelis in detail. As they were arrested, they told the police, We are not your problem. The Palestinians are your problem. The police found all sorts of suspicious items in their van, including box cutters, multiple passports, and $4,700 cash rolled up in a sock, and a subsequent FBI investigation revealed that two of them were indeed Israeli intelligence. The revelations of the arrest put a spotlight on Israel about its role in 9-11. Did Israel have foreknowledge? Was Israel a participant? Fox News aired a four-part investigation into Israeli spying on American high-level targets, such as national security and intelligence agencies. The report included stunning revelations. 60 Israelis who had been detained in connection with the September 11th terrorism investigation. U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S. who may have known things they didn't tell us before September 11th. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained.